Well, let's take this evening as we begin, and we're going to open our Bibles up to a familiar psalm, Psalm 119, and we'll be spending all of our time there in Psalm 119 this evening. What I would like us to do is, and we're going to be doing this in, in two parts. We're going to actually, in their... We're going to take them opposite of their logical order. This evening we're going to be looking at the effects and then Lord willing next um, Wednesday evening we'll be looking at um, the, the dedication and the pursuit of staying in the Word of God. But this evening what I'd like us to do is see some of the effects that God produces in our lives, in the life of a believer, through the study of His Word. The psalmist here in Psalm 119 lists many of the effects of his time spent in God's Word. I've listed 16 of them that I've gone through and studied and seen, and I think that there are some others I'll give them to you briefly, and then we'll go back and we will look at each of the verses in reference to them. So we will be spending all of our time right here in Psalm 119. As we begin, I want to make something very clear, though, very important that we understand this. These are effects that the, God, the Word of God has produced in this person's life who has studied the Word. They were not, as they came to God's Word, they were not in pursuit of these effects. No doubt they acknowledged they were real. They acknowledged that they were blessings and benefits that came from God's Word. But that's not the things that they were necessarily pursuing. As we'll see next week, they were insistent upon the Word. They were pursuing God's Word. It was in His Word they delighted. It was in His Word that they, they meditated. And as they did that, out of that came these effects. So it's important for us to understand that. One of the reasons why it's important for us to understand that is because, as we know from the New Testament, whenever you do come to the Word of God, whenever you do purpose to walk in obedience to it, whenever you do purpose to meditate on it, when you do purpose to fill your mind with it, there are going to be tribulations and trials that will come as a result of that. And those tribulations and trials will impact a person's life to the extent if they were pursuing not the Word and not God, but the effects of the Word, that they're going to turn away from the Word. But to those who genuinely come, there are great blessings. To those who purpose to, to stay in His Word, to live their life according to His Word, to be taught of God, and in particular His Word, there are certain blessings God gives to them. And I want to look at those this evening. Let me give them to you first in just as I've written, written them out here. And then we'll come back and address the verses specifically. Happiness is the first one. Or, and we're going to take these in the order that I have seen them as I've studied through this particular psalm. Happiness, holiness, confidence. Happiness, holiness, and confidence. Peace thankfulness, reverence to God, integrity, steadfastness, liberty. And I've mentioned all of these next three together. They're very similar. Direction, discretion, and counsel. I put all of those three on one line. Direction, discretion, and counsel. Understanding. Revival. Help. Comfort. 
strength, hope. One more time, happiness, holiness, confidence, peace, thankfulness, reverence to God, integrity, steadfastness, liberty, direction, discretion, counsel, understanding, revival, help, comfort, strength, and hope. We'll look at each one of them, but first I want us to acknowledge that at least 10 different times in this psalm, in this particular chapter, the psalmist cries out for God to teach him his word. He uses statutes, precepts, all in essence referencing God's word. Ten different times. Let's look at those. First of all, look at verse 12. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Verse 26. I have told of my ways, and you have answered me. Teach me your statutes. Verse 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. Verse 64. The earth is full of your loving kindness, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Verse 66. Teach me good discernment and knowledge, for in your commandments, uh, for I believe in your commandments. Verse 68. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. Verse 108. O oh, accept the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. 124. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness and teach me your statutes. 135. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. And finally, 171. Let my lips utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. Let's go back in this psalm now to the beginning of it. And each time we'll work from the beginning toward the end with each one of these particular blessings or effects that the psalmist recognizes have come to his life as a result of delighting in God's Word, meditating in God's Word, treasuring God's Word, as we'll come to and look at next week. First of all, happiness, and this is conveyed in the word blessed. Psalm 119, verse 1 and 2. How blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of of the Lord. Verse 2. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. You know, it's interesting, especially here, whenever we look at verse 2. How blessed are those who observe his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. If you want to know God, and this is conveyed here in this psalm and in Proverbs in particular, that you're going to know him through the study of his word. You're not going to get that by osmosis or just natural observation. To know God, you have to come to his word and spend time in his word, meditate on his word, fill your mind with his word, and as you do, you will know him. As we'll see, you'll reverence him. But here we see that the person who is in the word and the word in them is happy. Look at verse 14. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. 
As much as in all riches I have rejoiced in his testimonies, he says. Move to verse 111. I have inherited your testimonies forever, for they are the joy of my heart. 162. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great spoil. Holiness. Go back over to the beginning of the chapter with me. Holiness. Verse 3. They also do no unrighteousness. Who is they? Well, you back up to 1 and 2. It's those whose way is blameless, those who walk in the law of the Lord, those who observe, in verse 2, his testimonies, who seek him with all their heart. What happens? They also do no unrighteousness. They walk in his ways. God's word produces holiness in our lives. As you spend time in God's word, God's word, spiritually speaking, separates us from our own sin, and from the sin in the world. Look down in the text with me to verse verse 7. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. Notice this. With uprightness of heart, that's holiness here, as a result of what? When I learn your righteous judgments. God's Word produces holiness in our lives. And again, this is not surprising to us. We know from John 17, 17, that was Jesus' prayer, wasn't it? Sanctify them, produce holiness in their lives, set them apart. All of that is a reference to holiness. With your truth, your Word is truth. Look from here to verse 9. How can a young man make his way pure? Well, here's the answer. By keeping it according to your word. By keeping it according to your word. You know, this is a very interesting verse, especially today for churches that want to just fill the lives of young people with all kinds of activities and entertain them and make sure they're occupied And you'll often hear, well, that keeps them off the streets. And that little phrase, keeps them off the streets, is kind of a euphemism for making them, you know, not get involved in bad things. Well, what does God say? Take a look at it here. How shall a young man, or how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Verse 11. Your word have I hid in my heart, or in this version, treasured in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Notice, the word is the object, and the consequence is purity, that I may not sin against you. Look to verse 104. From your precepts I get understanding. Obviously, we'll come back to that whenever we look at understanding. And notice the effect. Therefore, I hate every false way. The hating of the false way is a condition of purity, of righteousness. How about confidence in one's life? Confidence, and this is not empty confidence, this is not boastfulness, but is genuine confidence in the light of being blessed with God's Word. Look at verse 6, Psalm 119, 6. Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. How, and what's he talking about? Look at verse 5. Oh, that my ways may be established to keep your statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. So you've walked in obedience to God's word. Whenever you look at his commandments, you're confident as opposed to being ashamed. Look at verse 22. 
Take away reproach and contempt from me, for I observe your testimonies. Verse 31. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. We'll come back to 37 here in a little while as well whenever we get down to direction, discretion, and counsel. Look at verse 39. Again, with regard to confidence, turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your ordinances are good. Your ordinances are good. You know, later on in verse 68, the psalmist writes, you are good and do good. And we read that a moment ago. Teach me your statutes. And notice here in this that he says God's ordinances are good. They're good. Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your ordinances are good. Move to verse 42. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. As opposed to flopping around with no answer, confidence, the ability to answer those who reproach us. Move from here to verse 46. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings and shall not be ashamed. 61. The cords of the wicked have encircled me, but I have not forgotten your law. Confidence, even though we're at times encircled, as he says here, with cords of wickedness, of the wicked. Move from here to verse 80. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, so that I will not be ashamed. And 161. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. We're not shaken by the persecution of the wicked. How about peace? Look at 165. Those who love your law have great peace, and nothing causes them to stumble. Over in Psalm 112, verse 7, the righteous are not afraid of bad news. Their heart is fixed, the text says, trusting in the Lord. So God's word brings peace to our minds, to our hearts. How about thankfulness? Go back to the beginning in verse 7. I shall give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn your righteous judgments. The psalmist is saying, whenever I learn your righteous judgments, I'm going to give thanks to you. And judgments with regard to not only um, God's Word, but being able to examine the justice of God in the light of His Word, that produces in our lives thankfulness to God. You know, we live in a day and an age where Whenever someone gets justice, we, we ought to praise the Lord and be grateful for justice. Now, does that mean that we are to be ashamed for not receiving God's justice insofar as we have received His grace? Most certainly not. But there is nothing wrong with God's justice. It's God's justice. It's His judgment. Verse 62. At midnight I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. Again, God's Word produces thankfulness in our lives to God. It produces reverence 
in our lives to God. We could say that thankfulness, in a sense, is reverence to Him, but it also produces directly reverence for Him. Look at verse 27. Make me understand the way of your precepts, so I will meditate on your wonders. You know, whenever we have an understanding of God's Word, we interpret the world around us in a different way, a different manner. And we look at it in the light of the wondrous work of God, and we reverence Him. Look at verse 38. Establish your word to your servant as that which produces what? Reverence for you. Reverence for, for God. Whenever God's word is established in our lives, it makes a difference how we view the Lord. We reverence him. Look at verse 62. At midnight I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances, as we mentioned with regard to thankfulness. 120. 120. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. That's a reverential fear of God. And that's a good thing whenever it occurs in our life. And it's produced in our lives by God's Word. 164. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous ordinances. Seven times a day. The idea also behind the seven is it's a completeness. The completeness of his life is in a day is that of giving praise to God. And in particular that because of God's ordinances. Verse 171. Let my lips utter praise for you teach me your statutes. Whenever God teaches us His Word and we learn from it, our lips praise His name. How about integrity? God's Word produces integrity in our lives. It stands to reason if it produces holiness, it would produce integrity. Verse 29, Remove the false way from me and graciously grant me your law. God's law produces integrity. It drives out the falsehood from our lives. Verse 36. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to dishonest gain. How about steadfastness? 119, Psalm 119, look to 92. Steadfastness in our lives. If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. If he had not had the word of God as his delight, he would have perished in his affliction. Verse 102. I have not turned aside from your ordinances, for you yourself have taught me. Staying the course, a steadfastness as a result of God teaching us through his ordinances. Steadfastness. 157. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, yet I do not turn aside from your testimonies. God's Word produces a steadfastness in our lives even in the midst of persecution and adverse circumstances. 165. Those who love your law have great peace, and nothing causes them to stumble. 
Those who love your law have great peace and nothing causes them to stumble. God's word produces in us a steadfastness. How about liberty? Verse 45. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. It's interesting, the idea of liberty there is that of in a wide space. It's an openness in the sense of not hemmed in, but um, uh, free from, we could say, um, um, ungodly restraints, free from burdens. Jesus put it this way, as we know in John chapter 8, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you what? Free. Free. Not tripping over obstacles, not falling down, not suffering all of these kinds of consequences from, from sin, but having a liberty. Look at verse 30, uh, 133, excuse me. 133. Establish my footsteps in your word. And do not let iniquity have dominion over me. As opposed to being under the dominion of sin, and we could put this also in the category of holiness, God's Word, whenever we are established in it, we have liberty. And we're not under the dominion of sin. And then I put all three of these next ones on the same line. Direction, discretion, and counsel, they're all there together. Look with me to verse 24. Direction, discretion, and counsel. Verse 24, your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. You could also read it this way. Your testimonies also are my delight, my counselors. What a great blessing that is. They're our counselors. Move from here to verse 37. Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. That's discretion. Discretion. Instead of being deferred or distracted with vanity, Turn away my eyes from looking at vanity and revive me in your ways. Discretion. God's word brings or produces discretion in our lives. Verse 66. Teach me good discernment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. The word discernment here, you could also translate it judgment. Teach me good judgment. So we learn direction, discretion, discernment, counsel from God's Word. 105. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Direction. We've often said of this verse, it's a lamp to my feet. It illuminates where I'm at. It's a light to my path. It illuminates the direction I'm going gives me insight where I'm at. It gives me insight where I'm going. It gives me counsel, direction, discretion, discernment. 130. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I love that. It gives understanding to the simple. The under, unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. We don't have to be simple. We don't have to be naive is the idea here. We can take in God's Word and be blessed with wisdom and discernment. 
move from here to verse, well, let's look at understanding. Go back over to verse 98. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. They are ever mine. Verse 99, I have more insight than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. And verse 100, I understand more than the aged, because I have observed your precepts. Down to 104, from your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. It's interesting here that real understanding as a result of taking in God's Word, leads to hating the false way. Again, to holiness, as we pointed out. To 130. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple, as we said just a moment ago, with discretion, direction, and counsel. 169. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. How about revival? I love this one. I remember as a kid, and I'm sure you do too, of going to revivals. It seemed like about every two years, the churches would have what we referred to as revival. And really... Our lives as Christians should always be about revival. As we spend time in God's Word, His Word revives us. It's not an uh, annual thing. It's not to be a semi-annual thing or twice a year, but it is to be constant in the lives of God's people. God's Word brings revival. Look at verse 25. My soul cleaves to the dust. Revive me according to your word. He knew that in the midst of despair, God's word, as he came to it, would bring him revival. Verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your word has revived me. 93, I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have revived me. 107, I am exceedingly afflicted. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. 149, hear my voice according to your loving kindness. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word to your ordinances. 154. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me according to your word. 156. Great are your mercies, O Lord. Revive me according to your ordinances. God's word brings us help. It brings us help. Go to verse 41. May your loving kindness also come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. Verse 81. My soul languishes for your salvation. I wait for your word. I wait for your word. Psalmist knew God promised certain things through his word, and, and he's waiting on God's word to come to fruition, to bring help. Verse 92. If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. Verse 170. Let my supplications come before you. Deliver me according to your word. And 175, let my soul live that it may praise you and let your ordinances 
help me. Let your ordinances help me. How about comfort? Look at verse 50. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your word has revived me. 93, or go back to verse 25. We missed that one. My soul cleaves to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Again, comfort and reviving here. Similar effects. Verse 54. Your statutes are my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. Your statutes are my songs. What a praise. The idea there is obviously singing and that as a result of being comforted. Verse 72. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. 76. Oh, may your loving kindness comfort me according to your word, the word, according to your word to your servant. The idea here is that he is comforted by God's word. It's comfort to the one who serves the Lord and obviously delights in his word. Verse 76, Oh, may your love and kindness comfort me according to your, to your word, to your servant. And verse 77, May your compassion come to me that I may live. And 143, Trouble and anguish have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. I love that particular verse. Even though he's besieged with trouble and in agony, there is a delight in the midst of it. And that is in God's word. How about strength? Go back in the text to verse 28. My soul weeps because of grief. Strengthen me according to your word. 116. Sustain me according to your word that I may live. And do not let me be ashamed of my hope. We'll come to that here right now because God's Word also brings us hope. God's Word brings us hope. Go to verse 49. Remember the word to your servant in which you have made me hope. He hopes in God's Word and as he does, obviously, as we saw in 116, it brings hope. What a great blessing. All of these things, effects, and many others as a result of delighting in God's Word, purposing to uh, come to the Word of God, to fill one's mind with His Word, to delight in it, to treasure it, as we'll pick up and see next week. What a great blessing. No wonder, whenever you come to the New Testament, as we've already uh, indicated, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed? You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Not only that, Jesus um, has communicated to us that, the, that whoever builds his house on, uh, in this case, on his life on the word of God, that is, his word will stand. It will stand fast in the midst of peril in Matthew chapter 7. Again, none of these things in the New Testament with regard to God's word and the pro things it produces in the life of the believer were new. They just expounded on those things that God had already declared multiple times over in the Old Testament. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your word, that it is living and powerful. 
Thank you that it effectually works in the lives of those who believe. Thank you, Father, that because of it, because of it, light arises to us in the midst of darkness, for it is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In a crooked, cursed, corrupt world, Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.